Hey, good looking. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Kendra Morgan Official. I put out content centered around single eyeshadows, makeup brushes that aren't Morphe, and sunscreen. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you subscribe. And welcome to the Makeup Lab. Today we will be doing some first impressions on the refer brushes. I'm going to do some measurements and also some comparisons to some of the typical brushes that you might have already in your collection and or know so well. Okay, so I can't see myself. <laughs> the word is going to go from here. Um, I'll be demonstrating also at the very end the, okay, that looks like good quality. So we'll just go with that. Okay, folks, we're just going to go with that because my laptop is lagging real bad. All right. Um, so we've got the four new brushes. They are available for pre-order pre-order in the concept store. So if you guys want to get your hands on these, I don't know when they ship, but um, they are available for pre-order. You have to go to the concept store and they're available, I think for $88 or on a, like a discounted price right now. They'll ask you for feedback after a month and um, in trade for that, then you get to um, get a little bit of a discount. Refer was so kind and gave me these four brushes to try out for you guys and let them know what I think. So I don't know if I actually have any of my stuff linked down below. <laughs> I don't even have my thumbnail anymore. That means that my description box is gone too. So anyways, I will link afterwards um, all the makeup brush videos that I'll probably be referencing, but typically you guys will see me referencing Chinese artisan brushes is kind of what I'm known for and I do some vegan cruelty free brush reviews as well and today we are doing refer. I also have refer brush reviews which I'll list those two that I have down below and so this is just going to be a first impressions, um, a measurements and a demonstration and hopefully hopefully afterwards I can put some timestamps in for this as well. And nobody's on this live stream. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So the first, I guess we can go in order. So we'll start with the 26 and then we'll move over to the 27, 28, and then finally the 29. Boy, I wish I could find where I could put my thumbnail. So at least I could put a thumbnail up. <laughs> guess I won't worry about that right now. Okay. The first brush that refer is uh, releasing in their concept stores the 26 and it just kind of looks like a pencil bullet brush. In relation to the Refer 03 which is available I think in their core collection it's substantially larger and um, quite a bit longer. So let's see let's do comparisons and then I'll measure for you guys. How about that? So we're going to do comparisons right now. And then Refer's 27 brush is the next brush. It looks like a blending brush and immediately right away I saw my MAC 224 brush and it looks almost identical to it and spoiler alert I did some measurements and the measurements are exactly the same. The density however well first of all it would be kind of hard to explain the density whether or not they're the same density. I mean that's really would be difficult to measure but in relation, like they feel about the same density. This does have substantially softer hair than this one. So that is the 27, the 28 brush, very nice brush. Unique in shape, it looks a lot like your MAC 242 brush and the Refer P21 brush, or excuse me, the Refer 21 brush that I also have here except it is all goat hair and it's not a goat synthetic hair mixture. So we'll go through measurements on that and you guys will see that. But this seems to be the same um, style. It's just different bristles. So that's the 28. And then lastly, we have the 29. This little, little guy right here, it looks like an edging brush. This would not ever be, in my opinion, something in the core collection. It would just be a very much a detailing type of brush. Um, I definitely see somebody who would want to use this as a, like a cut crease to add that dark definition into their, 
cut crease, that might be something that would be make this brush extremely useful. Um, it's goat hair and it's measurement, it's super tiny. I don't have anything like that in my collection. I know in previous brush reviews, I've talked about like looking and searching for a an eyebrow brush that could possibly be used. And I haven't really ever found one in the Chinese artisan brushes that I have, but this is basically what I have and it really doesn't compare. There is no comparison to it, but I'm just letting you know that's what I have, so. Okay, let's do some measurements so you guys can see exactly what these brushes measure out to be. Again, I can't see myself. My screen, for some reason, isn't coming up on my laptop, so you'll just have to bear with me. If you're on, say hello. Thanks so much for watching. And also make sure to hit the like button on your way out, and let's get started on some measurements. So the 26 is going to measure in circumference. So all I'm gonna do right here is just take this, oops, turn it on. I've got a, a caliper here, turn it on measuring in millimeters and it's going to measure about seven millimeters in um let's see that would be diameter for height we're looking at approximately 12.4 millimeters in height and then there's of course the tapered um, bristles right there at the top really very soft again refer doesn't really state what type of brush hairs they use so don't really know and i think for the general population the they might be trying to trend away from stuff like that because you can't always be guaranteed to get that type of hair and also it is subjective so that might be something that people or the artisans are trying to get away from i don't know i don't know if that's the truth or not that's just my opinion but Okay, so then measurements for the 27, and I'll just go ahead and give you guys the measurements right next to the MAC 224, which is also, no, this one was made in France, so that's kind of interesting. So diameter-wise, got a measurement here of 6.28. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have no idea. I'm really sorry, and I apologize if this is absolutely garbage quality and this one is 6.42 so probably a little bit a little bit more like density here there we go 6.4 yeah so they're roughly the same maybe a millimeters difference and again if you look the height is the same let's go ahead and get the height real quick for you looking at about 19 millimeters. Let me re-zero that. So brush hairs are right about, yeah, 18, 19. I get 18.92 on the second measurement. For the MAC 224, which is no longer available, by the way. Whoa. we have 20.4, so similar, maybe not exactly the same. And how I do my brushes and to see like what type of blending brush I look for, for A, somebody that I'm doing makeup on and B, you know, for myself as well. I guess this is the only mirror I have. Totally prepared, let me tell you. I am never scheduling another live again. I'm just telling you guys that right now because just to try and be here and have this working like was near impossible for me <laughs> but anyways so what i generally look for because i can't just be whipping out every single brush that i own and trying it on a client and be like oh that didn't work oh that didn't work oh that didn't work either so what i generally do is i take and i just lay the brush up against my eye like this and you can see that the bristles splay out over the crease a little bit on both sides but generally speaking i am going to go ahead and touch it to my head but i wouldn't if i was doing makeup on somebody oh i didn't even blend that contour in <laughs> nice is i would just make sure that from here to here for so from your crease to your brow bone or your arch um that the bristles kind of 
fill in that area, right? So let me give you an example of a brush that would be too big. So this brush right here, this is just a Jessup Tapered Blending 224, but it's, I don't know if these are handmade or not, so I don't know if these are Chinese artisan brushes, but anyways, if I take and measure this up against my crease to my um, eyebrow, you can see that it's almost slightly too big, right? It's really taking up a lot. So for that diffuse blending, I don't have much room to just kind of get in there and work it. So this is a brush that would be extremely useful for blending eyeshadow for eyelids that are normal. I don't think I have large eyelids. I don't think I have small eyelids either. They probably look about average, I would say. Maybe slightly bigger than the average person's eyelid space, but probably not much more than that. Again, the 224 would work well if I let it bloom out. I really never used this brush. I bought it and I never used it. So you can see right there that, again, you would have an ideal blend right there. And you wouldn't have to work too much. So we've got the measurements. Let me grab measurements for this last one. This is the Ruffer 29. Let me zero this out. And I'll give you some measurements because this is quite quite tiny. I'm so sorry. It's, I guess nobody's on maybe. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Let me try and bring it up from the actual live chat page. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Oh, there's seven people watching. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. So sorry. This is a mess. I need to learn Okay, hi Ruby and hi Eileen. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I guess I'm just gonna watch straight from a live stream. Just like I'm viewing exactly what you guys are viewing. That's awesome. Can't. Uh, so let me go ahead and get some measurements for this little guy right here. Doo -doo -doo. Looks like about four millimeters in width. Hi Miss Nat. Oh, hi Miss Davis. And then for height, let me get my microscope. There's not going to be much over two millimeters here. Yep, 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 yep. So about 2.41. Again, that's a complete estimation because I'm just like holding the bristles over there. So really, really tiny, extremely precise blending. <clears throat> And I mean, for me, like I would love it for getting in there and adding some depth in a cut crease if I were going to do something like that. You could probably also smudge some of this underneath in your lash line because it just fits really nicely there. But this is definitely uh, a detail type of brush. So, okay, now we've got measurements taken care of. I did some comparisons here. Let me show you also, this is one of my Chinese artisan brushes. I do recommend this one for, I have a brush review on it basically, and I recommend this. This is my Misty Bamboo Ebony set, and it comes in a face and an eye set. And just to show you guys the difference, this is quite a substantially smaller blending brush than this one. This almost identically mimics the MAC 224. However, I will say it is so, 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 so much softer in, um, in hair yeah this is just like complete and utter workhorse really really stiff and scratchy this is very very soft so probably looking at an upgraded hair right there okay um do, do, do. let me compare so let me show you comparisons here this is the mac 224 again we also have the refer 21 and i have a video on that that i'm going to cleverly link in the eye and down below if they let you do they let you link in cards on a live stream afterwards? Let me know. <laughs> um, but these two are identical in measurements and the hair type as well. So this one right here is all goat hair and it's pretty fine. So I'm going to be excited to see if this performs anything like this. My guess is you probably need that synthetic natural hair mixture to really get a good like pasty swipe and foiled look, but we can try. We can definitely try. Um, and then, like I said, don't have any comparisons for this little guy. I 
I don't know why I don't because honestly it would make a really nice brush. I know that Fluffy Food A on Instagram just recently posted some comparison brushes and I believe she had Haki Hodo, Shiku Hodo, Kyoto, and a few of the other, and Bithyoto. I don't know how to pronounce that exactly, so I'm probably butchering it. I apologize, but she had comparisons of these types of shapes of brushes, so you could go on her Instagram and check it out. I could probably also link her down below in the, in the thing because I follow her there. And other than that, let's just kind of do a demonstration. I wish I could zoom y'all's in, but I can't. I'm looking at me. I'm looking really mole ratty, washed out a little bit. So I thought for today's look, we would go ahead and use some Makeup Geek. For any of you guys, yeah, that would work really good for an inner corner uh, application, I feel like. Maybe even slightly big for some eyes, but definitely could use it for an under eye. And you know what else you might get jolly with? is just bringing out that, you know, winged smoky liner. You could possibly do that with this as well. I'm not 100% sure. But I thought we would take some Makeup Geek Shadows, put a little quad together, and then use it. And if you guys have never used Makeup Geek Shadows or are not familiar with the Matrix system, um, and you don't have to buy these. You can just go to the website and pick the ones that you want. This one right here is in my palette that's quite possibly over there for another dupe video. Not really sure. I have adult ADHD, I have found. So I basically I am a train wreck. I'm either like trying to be super organized or I don't know where anything is at unless it's all out in the open and everything looks like a mess. So I battle with that on a daily basis. There's a like a little tidbit about me. Um, but the matrix system idea works such that you can choose a color, any color you'd like from each row and, and it can be any column, put them all together and make a cohesive look. So I thought we would go ahead and go today and pick out three of the colors. And then I do want to use, um, a couple of my gimme glow, uh, brand new shades that I just got. So unfortunately the shimmer shadow won't be there. Let's, it won't be from Makeup Geek. It'll be from Gimme Glow. Let's actually, yeah, there is some neutral but warm tones in here. And then also if you guys were ones that purchased the Makeup Geek Matrix before they started making these really awesome cards, I have a card right here. So I knew exactly what, where everything went. And that was really helpful for me as well. And then I just uh, glued it on the back. So, okay, let's pick out some colors. I know that I want for my transition to be something like kind of neutral. That looks cool. Let's try this one. Prim and proper. No, it's cupcake. Cupcake. Everybody remembers cupcake. So there's cupcake. We'll add it. So I'll do four of the Makeup Geeks. And then I've also got Roses Remix whoopsie, and Glamorous. And I thought we would put those all over the lid and try and get like a really foiled look out of that uh, MAC 224. Oh yeah, also this is the Refer 2. See ADHD here. This is the Refer 2. That's what it looks like in comparison to the Refer 28. It's substantially thicker for one, and then also it's a little bit shorter and stout. This mimics the MAC 239. This one mimics the, 22, the 242, except for that it's differing in um, bristles. All right, moving on. I would like to use this guy here. I should have brought my depotting tool out. Never a better time to put your finger through a shadow than right on camera. Mm -hmm. So everybody can see. This is Honey Badger. We'll use that. How do we want to deepen? Do we want to deepen? Let's, let's deepen with like a really dark charcoal. I don't think I want to go there. Not today. Let's use uh, Deja Brew. That's pretty. So Deja Brew will be from my third row. This is what I have currently. Lastly, I think it's going to be this Bitten shade. Oh, give me the dirt. Uh, 
All right, there we go. We have four picked out. Unless should we do one from the colors? Uh, let's not confuse me even more today. All right, so blending wise, I've got a mirror here. <laughs> I was like, did I bring a mirror? Probably not because I have, see ADHD here. I have to be able to see all of my stuff or it just, just like really bamboozles me. So let's see together how this brush works. I really just want to dip into that second shade over and I believe it's Honey Badger. All right. Blends nicely. I think for a blending brush, I would probably not be able to go too, too much larger than this. Cause see how I have a little bit of wiggle room, but not very much. That's kind of what I like and that's what I aim for. And if I'm doing somebody else's makeup, I do the same thing and then I just kind of buff it in and around. I wish I could just zoom you in, but I can't. I, like if you guys really knew like how I stream. <laughs> If you are a content creator and you want to live stream via your phone, get with me later because I can show you all the deets. It just takes literally one app and you can do it. Um, I'm still learning myself, but you can make it happen. I, for the longest time, thought, well, let me just do a little comparison brush here and see if like the bristles. This is a dyed goat hair and the other one looks like it's undyed. So, Oh, Scratch City. Oh, man. Now I know why I retired you. I mean, do you guys remember back in the day when this was the brush everybody had? And that's why I bought it. I mean, it's like, oh, everybody else had it. Yes, live streaming on your phone is life. <laughs> they tell you you can't do it unless you have a thousand subscribers, but you absolutely can. Don't let that stop. You just have to have a third party app and then um, you go from there. So. That's how you do it. But with that being said, it is a little bit cumbersome when trying to go into a scheduled live because it wouldn't let me go in until that actual time. So I couldn't like be waiting and trialing out anything. And of course, I did not start my lava lamp <laughs> this morning like I told myself I would. That little decor is going to have to be omitted from my background because I just constantly forget and then it you know, doesn't really work out that way. Now it just looks like a light. Okay, so really, really nice. Let's see if we can deepen with that brush still. It does have a bit of a point, so it's a little bit tapered. And what was that one shade called? I don't remember. I'm gonna cover up the, uh, it was this, the third row, so that was Deja Brew. Remember, it was something related to coffee. It's Marlena. It's probably going to be related to coffee. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, very nice. This one doesn't seem quite as densely packed as the 224, but it's really nice. It's not stingy either. Now, um, here we go. Here's where I'm going to start in on it. So you can see here the length difference. I like to have a little bit of length on my brushes just to kind of, you know, not be so choked up on the brush. I like a little bit of length. These are also very, very lightweight. I'm assuming this might be an aluminum ferrule and it's just very lightweight. For some people, they like that. Um, typically, I like a little bit more weight driving my blend but that's a personal preference. Yeah, it's, it's working just fine. I'm able to control the blend a little bit and still keep it downward. And then when I don't have as much product on my brush, I can just kind of feather upward into the brow area. Really nice, can't really complain there. Would probably use this again. If I looked through my four Smith brushes that I own, I could probably find one that's similar to that. 
Steven, how are you? Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to be on your live stream later. So if you guys, oh, shameless plug here. My friend Rupi, um, her friend Betsy Gokshir, and her daughter Nadia, and lovely, beautiful Steven Ford, they do makeup magpies every other week. And this week, Rupi, you're probably going to have to fill me in which channel it's going to be on. Oh my goodness. So Miss Davies is spreadsheeting her. So the live stream like stopped. No. Um, she's spreadsheeting <laughs> her, her single eyeshadows, which takes a long time. But in my case, like with me putting in a Sydney Grace order, I've done it numerous times where I have, um, bought the same shadow twice because you have a certain taste and you just generally don't deviate from that very much okay so wonderful blend i think with the mac brush you would probably see about the same but again look i've got a little bit more of a handle here so continuous improvement i would just make the handle a little bit longer they're just a little bit too short of course maybe this is supposed to be a travel brush series i don't know i really don't know i mean it would be a really pretty decent travel brush so i traveled with these guys right over here hopefully it's not freezing up hopefully that i'm doing okay and these are shorter again i will link in the description bar my review of these brushes and it wasn't necessarily horrible but they weren't my first pick and i did say i would recommend them for traveling because the handles are shorter but again the weight distribution was heavy on the end and very light up in here and i didn't really find it very conducive for my needs but I used this as my blending brush and it blended fine but I was just looking for like a little natural wash of color in the lid or in the crease area and so that's what I did and it worked fine for that but if I was going to do like a big blown out look Ugh, Nikki thank you so much for joining me honey I love your food day collection by the way they do, uh, that must be what these are uh, tailored after. I know, I call these Chinese artisan brushes. I don't know, I'm just not a huge fan of it. Like, the Smith brushes I can stand behind because the weight distribution is towards the center where the ferrule meets. And that's what I generally like, but I guess we're getting away from that, which is fine. I mean, to each their own. And then here, the, actually I'm kind of getting out of control, so. I do want to do like a little bit of etching. I cannot see my screen froze up here. I hope you guys can still see me. Yeah, I guess I just like the option of choosing, but we'll also take this little guy. Now, this little guy, I do want it short because you're you're choked up. You're right here doing detailed work, right? So that's what we want. And then this shade right here, well, whatever. You guys can figure it out, right? <laughs> I'm going to put that and just try to, like, stamp a little bit in that lash line. Oh, wow. That is super pencil thin. Very nice. And it doesn't feel like I'm really putting anything. Normally brushes, I wouldn't say similar to this, but something like this that you would have would be very pokey. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but I added a little bit of like definition to the eye. I am getting fallout, that's wonderful but expected for a really dark shade like this. I don't really tap off. So my screen froze and I'm like this. I hope you guys can see. I really want to try some Haku Hodo brushes, but I feel very overwhelmed when I go to CD Japan or even the Haku Hodo USA site. So I generally speaking, just I get on there, I make a wish list, and then I just never purchase anything because I'm like, I don't know. 
I don't know what to purchase. Oh, this works wonderfully. Look at that, folks. That does work really nice. Oh, wow. When I first got it, I was like, where's the brush? <laughs> but I see you. I see you now. I'm definitely not going to blend anything. It's very, very precise. I mean, barely smudges, almost just a direct line application right there for you. So really nice, really nice so far. Um, let's go ahead. I know we want inner corner highlight. Yes, we do. Let's do it. Just like Miss Davy said, let's do it. Good morning. Yes, that's a periodic table of elements behind me. And I am also going to be, I just thought of this last night in my ADHD brain, ADHD brain. I think that there is um, orbitals of shimmers and duochromes, and I'm going to put them all in relation to the periodic table of elements, and it's going to be called the periodic table of shadows. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you need to be, because that's going to be fun, right? I'm just going to make up stuff. Kind of like I made up that brush classification video, which I will have linked in my description bar as well. But um, I do want to take some Gimme Glow, and I think, I'm sure my eyes look like, they're pretty much brown, so maybe we should take like a rose gold. Should we take the roses remix or should we take the glamorous? <laughs> yeah, so, and it kind of is going to be when I dupe shadows, like Natasha's to me, Natasha Denona's shadows to me are very planar. They're very, very um, uh, one dimensional is what I would call them. So like 1S uh, or 2S2, if you guys know the periodic table at all. And I just like when I dupe things, I try to one up it. I try to take it to like another dimension, another orbital. And so people and I've been getting I don't want to say hate from the community, but people are just like, you're not even duping the shadow. You're not duping the shadows. You're not duping it. I'm like, well, no, because I'm one upping it. <laughs> but anyways, that's that's for another day. Let's take this guy. I am have a feeling I'm going to have to wet the bristles, but please. Um, so Nikki says it can be very overwhelming and she's referring to when you order off a of Hakuhoto or CD Japan. It's so hard to find reviews on exactly what brushes you're looking for. I felt the same way the first time I got into the Hakuhoto website. I joined the Fude, Fluff, or not Fluffy Fude, but I joined the Fude Reddit group and they've been amazingly helpful. Like anytime you can just be like, I'd like to look for a review on that and you can search for it as well. So let's try this shadow right here. Uh oh, I'm not used to 37. Are these 37? Like, let me, let me measure this. First of all, who needs this much shadow? Me, because I bought it. Is it 37? Oh my gosh, it's not on. I just want to measure. It should be like 300. 36 millimeters. Ooh, that's a lot of shadow. So you can make two out of these is what I hear. Um, that's cool. Let me try and add some of this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. So a little bit gentle on the picking up of the shadow. We could also try just a regular shimmer, like here's pink lemonade. Should I try it on the other side? Let's just do it. Let's just find out what these brushes can do. There we go. We get a better pickup. So this is a different type of mica and it's a little bit more expensive. It gives you a really foiled look though. So I would bet if I wet the brush, it would work really well. Let me try it uh, dry though. So there we go. And that's as much as I could pick up. I prepped my eyelids with the MAC Painterly paint pot right before this and then didn't set it mainly because I didn't have any time okay so this is giving me like a super washed out effect let me see if I have I should have a spritzer in here probably not uh, I feared the day that I would have to go over to my stage should I spit on it I don't have I literally have my guinea pig water bottle. I have some of this miracle water. Should I just use it? Let me just use it. I thought I had a, um, a spritzer bottle here. Mm. 
Mmm, I do. The Garnier. Okay, so I'm going to grab some of the shadow and spritz it on. And I'm probably going to have to dip back into the pan, but let's see here. Ooh, very nice. Being completely transparent, I almost always do it with my MAC 242s as well. So, you know, there you have that. This is a very interesting formula. Like, it's almost like a finger type of shadow. So let's try it. You Should we compare it to the 242 and see what that does, like dry and then do it wet? I feel like we should. Yeah, because this isn't really doing what I want it to do. This is just some rose water. I also just really think this is not a shadow that plays nicely without your finger. Oh, there she be. There we go. That's a much more foiled look. But let me finish it off with my finger. There it goes. There. That was the finger application right there. So I think it's just the finger shadow. Probably just a finger shadow. But I really almost want to give it like a cut crease look. Except for up by the top there. Wow. That's incredibly nice. So let's see what the Refer 21 does. Same shadow. Let's try it dry. Yeah. Same thing. Just kind of not really picking it up too much. I think this is a thicker or a, a tinier particle size. Oh, it does work just a smidge better, I would say. And I was able to kind of lift a little more. So this is seems like a little bit more porous, a little bit more coarser of a hair. And then when you've got that mixture, that really helps. So what synthetic doesn't do, the natural bristles in here will offer and vice versa. So I, I'm always going to be a Mac 242 Refer 21 lover. Like that's just who I am. And we were like totally flaking off. Okay. So that was just dry. Don't recommend that. That's the brand new um, Gimme Glow. I am using the Roses Remix, by the way. I forgot to dip in and then spritz it. This is a really big particle size. I'm not worried about anything happening there. Alrighty. And there you go. So not not too much more on achieving like that foiled look i would again have to use my finger but there you go okay now let's take this refer 26 and apply some electric unicorn to the inner corner this again is a large particle size Ooh, picked it up very nicely, very nicely i have to say even though it's really soft, picked it up really nicely. Okay. Oh. I feel like I should be bathing in this. <laughs> this is amazing stuff here. Oh my goodness. And this is also, the <laughs> this is like a bit much, but I kind of like it. And there's the other side. Oh yeah, very nice. And you know, it kind of just like, you just jiggle it around and it kind of gets all the angles and all the curvature right in the inner corner. I like that. I cannot complain. Just kind of jazz up, spruce up a really natural look. <laughs> So really, really some nice brushes there. Again, you could take the 29 and also work it down here and just do almost like an eyeliner type of look. See how I'm doing that? That's really nice too. 
It's almost touch and go. Like, sorry, I'm probably. You just almost stamp it in, wiggle it, and you've deposited your color. And the line is just super small and precise. For underneath, let's use some of that cupcake with that Refer 27 and just finish off the look. Yeah, really nice. Probably a little bit big because you kind of see I'm getting blown out here. It's almost kind of looking raccoony. It's not quite as controlled as I would like it to be, but that's why I use the lightest color instead of the darkest. And then I also have quite a bit of fallout. I should have put some powder underneath, but that's okay. All right, so there you have it. Do not have any mascara on hand. Sorry, I was not prepared. Um, but that is it. So that's a look at the ref for 26, 27, 28, and 29. Again, guys, after the video's over, I will give you guys um, some links in the description that you can follow for more brush reviews because I tend to do, I tend to side on the more Chinese artisan brushes because A, they're more affordable, and B, I just feel like um, there's not a whole lot of people out there that really try to go the alternate food day route. These are probably a, I don't remember what I classified my refer brushes, whether they were a type three or a type two B. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I will link my brush classification video downstairs as well. It basically explains why I wouldn't uh, compare this brush to an Amazon brush that you find you know, in those $10 kits, uh, because they just have different, they meet different needs, they're different price points, and a lot of times, um, different hair types, you know, and they're just really not interchangeable to compare across the board. And so I think these are actually a 2B, but they are in the food aid category. So um, technically they could be a type three, kind of a hybrid. And like I said, they really bridge the 2B to the type three. Uh, first impressions, I don't have any complaints. I really like them. Uh, like I've already mentioned, I like a little bit of length on my brushes, but that's just personally me. And I'm kind of getting over it as I'm using some of my other Chinese artisan brushes traveling and whatnot. So thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you haven't already done your homework for Makeup Lab, 101, please subscribe and like this on your way out. I don't know how to end this live stream unless I just get up and do it. So I'm going to put my hand over it and tell you guys goodbye. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.